In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. God never stops doing good in our lives, because he loves us. Dear friends, as we come to the altar, we too are called to continue his mission in whatever way we are called to. Even at times when we meet those roadblocks, when we are criticized and condemned and we don't have the strength to carry on, but yet we trust in the Lord. He gives us the strength to carry on and to continue. As we come to the altar, let us ask forgiveness for the times we gave into hopelessness. We've given into depression. We've given into lack of faith to continue what the Lord has asked us to do. For the times we have failed to put our trust in the Lord, let us ask his forgiveness. Together we say, I confess, I confess to Almighty God, God and to and you, you, my brothers and sisters, and sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, words in what I have done, done in what and in I have what failed, failed to do. To do. Through, through my fault, through my fault, through my, through my most grievous fault. fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. They sow the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. A reading from the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Israel made kings, but not through me. They set up princes, but I knew it not. With their silver and gold, they made idols for their own destruction. I have spurned your calf, O Samaria. My anger burns against them. How long will they be incapable of innocence? For it is from Israel, a craftsman made it, it is not God. The calf of Samaria shall be broken to pieces, for they sow the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. The standing corn has no heads, it shall yield no flower. If it were to yield, strangers would devour it. Because Ephraim has multiplied altars for sinning, they have become to him altars for sinning. Were I to write for him my laws by the ten thousands, they would be regarded as a strange thing. As for my sacrificial offerings, they sacrifice meat, but the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Your response, House of Israel, trust in the Lord. House of Israel, trust in the Lord. But our God is in the heavens. He does whatever He wills. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. House of Israel, trust in the Lord. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. They have nostrils, but they cannot smell. House of Israel, trust in the Lord. They have hands, but they cannot feel. They have feet, but they cannot walk. Their makers will come to be like them, as will all who trust in them. House of Israel, trust in the Lord. House of Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. House of Israel, trust in the Lord. Kindly stand for the Gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own, and my own know me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give praise to His name. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, a demon oppressed man who was mute was brought to Jesus. And when the demon had been cast out, the mute man spoke. And the crowds marveled, saying, Never was anything like this seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, he casts out demons by the prince of demons. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every infirmity. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, Years ago, as I was in the seminary preparing myself for the mission, there was one life lesson that I learned, which I believe did great good to me. As a young man, I had this habit of collecting quotes from books and wherever I came across an inspiring quote from a popular author or by a saint, I would write it down. One day I had this inspiration to write a quote and put it on the notice board of the community. So I went to the superior, I was still a young student, I went to the superior and I said, um, I would like to put a quote on the notice board. So he gave me permission to do that. So I began to do that, write a quote every day, early morning and put it on the notice board for others to read. Some appreciated it. But some of them felt that those quotes were meant for them. So I was trying to tell something indirectly to them. And they didn't like it. When I heard about it, I thought to myself, why should I take the trouble? I'm trying to help the community. And if some of them don't find it helpful or don't appreciate my hard work, why should I waste my time? I will stop doing it. So I stopped. After a couple of days, my superior called me and he said, Vijay, what happened? I don't see any quotes on the notice board. So I told him, fathers, some felt it was not helping them and uh, so I stopped. Then he called me and he said, always remember, when you think and when you believe that you're doing something good, never stop doing good. Never stop doing good. When you want to do something good, surely you're not going to please everyone. But if you're convinced what you're doing is good, then don't give it up. Even if you find obstacles and opposition, continue the good that you do. And that learning did help me throughout my life. Dear friends, in the gospel today, when we look at Jesus, his Spending his life to do good in everything that he did. The words that he spoke to, his miracles, he was trying to help people. He goes out of his way without even taking the necessary rest and sleep. He constantly is on mission, helping people. 
And what does he get? Well, those who benefit appreciate it. But the Pharisees and the scribes who are supposed to be with him on this, they find fault at everything that he does. And worse, as we see in the gospel today, they assign his power to heal to demons. But Jesus does not give in to the temptation of stopping what he is doing. He could have told himself, well, I'm trying to help these people, but they don't understand what I'm doing. Why should I continue what I'm doing? I'll just let them be as they are, suffer and die. If they don't learn to appreciate what I'm doing, then why should I do what I do? That's not how he reacts to it. Immediately after the criticism that Jesus receives, one of the worst, as we see in the gospel, that he's been blamed that he's using power of the demon to cast out demons, Jesus goes out seeking people who are in need. He has compassion on them. It doubles up on what he is doing. He heals. He preaches the good news. He restores life. Not just there, he goes out to seek for people who would help him in doing the good that he is doing. And that's why he tells his disciples, pray that the Lord of the harvest may send in more men to work in his harvest. In other words, nothing stops his work in the kingdom. He knows why he is here to fulfill his father's will. And no matter who is happy or not, he will continue. Dear friends, it's a very important lesson for us in our lives. Because no matter how good intended you are, no matter how much of hard work you put in into your life, into your family, into your work, there will be someone who will not be happy about what you do. Simple thing at home. As women, you take so much of trouble to keep the house tidy, to cook, and but not everyone appreciates. Sometimes it's worse. You'll only hear complaints. Should you give up? No. Because when you do good, the first person that you please is God. Of course, when you do good, others benefit from it. But ultimately, the person that we do good for is God. And as long as you are convinced that this is what you're called to do, there's no reason to stop. At your work, especially when it comes to do, do something voluntarily. I've seen people backing off from church communities because they know after all the hard work that they put in, all that they would get is people assigning wrong motives to their actions, criticizing what they have done and only highlighting failures and faults. Always remember, when you are trying to do something good, there's someone else. The evil one is not happy about it. And all sorts of obstacles will come on your way. Our inspiration and our guide is our Lord. Today, let's pray for that grace. In whatever area of our lives that we are spending our lives on and doing all that good that we can do for others, Let's never stop it. Let's never stop doing good. Amen.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, 
forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, roof but only say, say the word, word and, my and my soul shall, shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Almighty, Almighty and, merciful and merciful Father, Father who show your love to all your creation, we come before you asking for the end of the pandemic currently ravaging our world. Grant healing to the sick, eternal life to the dead, and consolation to the bereaved families. Protect doctors, nurses, and others serving the sick. We pray for all governments and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, do join us for praying the Holy Rosary with us at 7 p.m. Sorry about the technical difficulties we had last evening with the rosary and we were very late in uh, streaming the rosary. Um, hope we have overcome that difficulty and join us at 7 to pray together. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus is the joy of living, is the king of life to me. Unto him I all am giving, is forevermore to be. I will do what he commands me, anywhere he leads I'll go. Jesus is the joy of living, he's the dearest friend.